We'll give you an update on the officer-involved shooting that occurred Wednesday, April 25th, around 4.50 in the afternoon at the intersection of East, uh, eastbound Colfax, or East Colfax at Quebec Street. Denver police officer detective who's assigned to our Safe Streets task force was in the area. He was following up on a lead looking for an armed robbery suspect who was wanted out of Missouri and out of Colorado. While he's out there in the area, he sees the suspect drive by in an Audi convertible. The cop's down, it was a, or the top is down, not the cop is down. Uh, it's a nice day out. Uh, he gets on the police radio and he shares that information with patrol officers. There are patrol officers in the area. Um, the suspect appears to see the officers before they're ready to stop him and starts fleeing from them before they've initiated any action to make contact with him. Uh, they get two police cars in the area and an attempt to make the contact in the area of Colfax and Syracuse and the suspect takes off hitting cars. Uh, one person described it as kind of pinballing off cars and tries to go between two cars that are stopped at the light. They're facing westbound on Colfax at Quebec and they're side by side, lane number one, lane number two. He tries to go in between them at a very high speed and as he's driving away from the officer at this high speed he has a gun in his hand and they can see him displaying that. When he gets be between those two cars, gets stuck, he gets wedged in between them. At that point another, the two officers run up on the car on either side Another officer in his car comes up and pulls in behind the suspect vehicle to block his car in so he couldn't escape. This is all happening really, really quickly, and the officer in the car who pulled up behind him sees the suspect point a gun at the officer who's standing at the passenger side of the suspect's car. The officer in his car shoots through the windshield of his police car to, towards the suspect. The other two officers, the one on the driver's side and the one on the passenger side, they also see the gun and see the gun being pointed at the officer on the right side of the car and they all fire simultaneously. Uh, that stopped and addressed the threat. We were able to remove the passenger from the car, uh, get her out of the way and uh, get control of the situation. We had a lot of citizens who were in danger, clearly. He had struck several cars trying to get away from the officers. Uh, the two cars that he was stuck in between, our concern was for their safety. His actions created a great safety risk for them. Uh, that was the reason the officers converged on the car as quickly as they did. The suspect was pronounced deceased at the scene uh, from gunshot wounds. The passenger, like I said, she was taken from the car. She was taken to Denver Health Medical Center for treatment of some minor injuries received in the accident. Uh, we had one officer who was also transported to the hospital for some very minor injuries as well. In the search of the car and the crime scene, uh, we did locate a gun that we, the officer saw. It matched the description. Um, and our suspect's been identified as Charles Bow. It's B-O-E-H, 76 of 81. He was wanted for six armed robberies uh, in Kansas City and St. Joseph's, Missouri, and then two armed robberies that he committed Monday, April 21st, uh, in the Denver metro area. One was a bank robbery and one was a convenience store robbery. Uh, the passenger's been identified as Rachel Hauser, H-O-U-S-E-R, and her birth date is 531 of 82 and she was jailed after being treated at the hospital. She had a warrant uh, parole violation for negligent homicide out of Missouri as well. Um, she's being interviewed as part of our investigation. So we had several witnesses, like I said, the cars that the suspect struck in his attempt to get away from the officers uh, that we interviewed. Uh, we did have a couple witnesses that were taken to the hospital first for treatment, again from the collision uh, when the suspect struck their car. Uh, nobody had significant injuries, but definitely enough to, to be treated. We had eight civilian cars that were damaged in the course of this. Uh, the officers who were involved are patrol officers. They're assigned to District 2. They've been placed on administrative leave for a few days, which is our protocol, and then they'll be placed on an offline assignment while the district attorney uh, completes their review of the case. Uh, all Denver Police Department officer involved shootings are combined investigations involving our homicide unit, the Aurora Police Department's homicide unit, the Denver District Attorney's Office, and with oversight from the independent monitor. Uh, the case will really progress through its investigative steps with the final review and decisions coming out from the District Attorney's Office. Uh, any questions? Um, you said that the officer recognized him. Is that because uh, everybody was uh, you know, told this is what he looks like to be on the lookout for him? So the de Safe Streets detective who was out there uh, knew what he looked like. He had his picture. He knew what kind of car he was driving. And I 
convertible top was down, and he got a great look at him and says, yep, that's him. He gets on the police radio and shares that information. So he was, we were positive who we had in the car. Was that gentleman, the officer in the Safe Streets Task Force, was that a marked vehicle or an unmarked vehicle? He's in an unmarked vehicle. He did not try to pursue the car. He saw it drive by him. And then that's when he, like you said, And yes, he used his police radio to share the information with the patrol officers who were in the area. And they, the patrol officers involved in this were all in marked cars. I think the other th thing that's important to note and that you probably saw from crime scene pictures is the police car that had the bullet holes through the window uh, was not up behind the Audi at the time when we got to the scene. When the officer got out of the car after the shots were fired, he didn't get the car completely in park, and so it rolled backwards a little bit. He was not shooting from that point where the car came to rest. His car was right up on top or right behind the suspect's vehicle. You said that that, that suspect you know, was waving. Was he like waving the weapon in like towards officers, and did he didn't shoot at officers? He did not. Sh we don't believe he shot at officers. We don't have evidence yet that points to that. But he was displaying the gun at the officers. And, and can you talk about what Denver's police policy is on shooting into a vehicle? So. Uh, our policy is that we don't shoot into moving vehicles. It's important to note the car had come to arrest before the shots were fired. And also the policy is clear that if you shoot into a car, that the threat is more than the car. The threat in this case was him armed with a gun. And, and is the, is the chief out, uh, you know, unveiling a new policy, like force of policy, that you know, would this shooting fall into acceptable use of force under that policy, do you know? I don't have not seen the final version of the policy. It's my understanding that that shooting into vehicles is part of the policy. So with every shooting like this, we review it to make sure it falls in the parameters of the law. Then we also do an internal review to make sure it falls within the policy. So that'll be part of the final review. You know, again, it, it, the suspect's actions drove this. You know, he had a gun. He's ramming cars, trying to get away. He's not complying with the officer's orders when they get up on the car, telling him to drop the gun. His actions created a very dangerous situation for the citizens in the immediate area, the citizens in the cars, people on the sidewalk, and the officers were responsible for stopping the threat that he created. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, guys.